feel like dancing It's foolishness I know But when the world has seen the lights They will dance with joy like we're dancing now Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Messy Church in a Bag. As we uh, gather to uh, look at the last bag that we've been doing, or the latest bag we've been doing, all you need is love. I was almost tempted to go, da, 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 da. but uh, I'll leave that for later. I hope you've all got good singing voices on you this afternoon, and you're all ready to uh, join in with the singing that we'll be doing. Uh, but thank you for being with us and thank you for being a part of Messy in a Bag. One day we might get to do Messy Church together in one real place. You remember those days when we used to be able to meet with other people? Fantastic times. Anyway, thank you to Emma and Simon for preparing all the packs and gathering all the contents and for Lucy, Emma and Simon for delivering all the bags around the villages. Um, but uh, lots of fun crafts this month as we think about the theme of love, how we love others and how much God loves us. Much more than even this much. Yes, God loves us even more than that. And uh, as we look at our passage from the Bible, uh, which you'll probably be familiar with, uh, we have a craft activity that meet the for each word to help us think about the different aspects of love. So over to uh, Emma to talk about what's in the bags. Ooh. So there's lots in the bag this month um, and I had to have a run around and try and find as many of those bits as I could. So the first thing that we had um, in the verses before our story it says if you don't have love you're like a loud bell or a clanging cymbal. So there was something to make 
that had lots of bells on it. And as Jeff said, we're going to be doing our singing this afternoon. Um, so we might be able to use those little tambourines uh, a little bit later on as we sing our songs together. Simon's asking to hold it, but I'm not going to give it to him because there was also a jigsaw. A jigsaw with lots of different bits. And anyone that knows me knows I'm rubbish at jigsaws. So I'm just going to get Simon to make the jigsaw when we look at the other things that were in that bag. So you can do that. <laughs> uh, there was also uh, talked about love is patient. So I don't know, did anybody manage to make and play the Jenga game that we included in the pack? And my question to you is how many layers did you manage to stack your Jenga up? We started with five. Did anybody get seven? Six. I'm seeing, oh, six, six in the Jowett household. Well done. Seven, six, six. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so love is patient. Love is kind. There was lots of things to make that you might like to have shared with somebody to share um, some love with them. You might have made um, a stained glass window. You might have made a calendar. You might have made a little picture frame to give us a gift. Lots of things in there. To, oh, brilliant. Oh, they're really pretty. Fantastic. Great. I think we missed Darcy who uh, had done seven. D Darcy done seven? Seven of brilliant. the, uh, the uh, well Jenga props. Very, very steady hands uh, in, in Darcy's house there. Um, the other kind of theme that we looked at then was love is forgiving. And we made two things uh, to think about, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> we made two things to think about to show how love is forgiving. Um, you had the chance to make some soap that you melted and then um, all sealed together, maybe with a little message in it or a little heart um, to help us think about when we wash our hands with soap, we can wash away those unkind things we might have accidentally said or done or things we didn't mean to do and, and soap is a bit of a way of, of illustrating that forgiveness. And the other thing that you might have, have done was had a go at colouring in the, the slate coaster with the chalks. And of course, if it goes wrong, you can just wipe it clean and it had a, it had a clean start on, on your coaster. So yes, Simon, it's your moment. The other thing was your jigsaw. And of course it had on all the different words that were in our reading, um, all the things that love is and love isn't. So do you want to hold it up? There we go. <laughs> so I can, can see lots of other people with their jigsaws there. Um, so some brilliant things made um, and, and maybe some things given away to show us what love is, love isn't. And of course, uh, we've always got the love of Jesus with us. Well done. Back to you, Jeff. Right, well, we're gonna sing our first song. Jesus loves me, this I know. A good old fashioned Jesus love song. The Bible tells me so.
ask me so. Sorry, over to Lucy for the reading. Sorry, I haven't got a copy of the whole thing in front of me, sorry. Um, today the reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 7. And some of you mummies and daddies out there might recognise this because this is a real common passage for during weddings. So you might have heard this one before. And this copy is in your little pack so that you can read it any time you would like. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous, it does not brag, it is not proud. Love is not rude, it is not selfish, and it does not become angry easily. Love, love does not remember wrongs done against it. Love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices over the truth. Love patiently accepts all things. It always trusts, it always hopes, and it always continues strong. And now we're going to do a, a little bit of a fun exercise. I hope you've got a pencil or a pen and a piece of paper to hand. Uh, I can see people getting them out. Um, and uh, over to Simon. Okay, so before we before we hear what we've got to do, um, in the reading, uh, we heard what love is and it isn't. And we know that we're taught to love each other just like Jesus loved us. So we were thinking, how could we how could we do something together to help us show that? And my first idea was that you could all help Simon go across a dangerous obstacle course. We could blindfold him and you could give him instructions to keep him safe as he went across an obstacle course. And then I realised actually that's probably quite hard to do on Zoom and we might end up focusing on the love is forgiving part of our reading, which didn't really want to be the main focus, especially if you had an accident. So, um, so I decided we wouldn't do that. Um, and instead, I thought we could um, do this activity where we have to follow the instructions and draw something and see what we end up with at the end. So if you've all got a piece of paper and a pen, I'm going to hand over to Simon, who's going to give us some instructions. And it's just as simple as doing the instructions that Simon asks us to. We'll see what happens afterwards. OK, so the, the first instruction, so you need, a, you need a blank piece of paper and a pen. And um, Emma and Jeff are going to join in as well. So you've got a bar. There's a bar set there of someone you'll be better than. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first thing then is to draw a small square towards the top of the piece of paper. Beneath that square, then draw a small circle, a little bit smaller than the square was. And then draw, and then draw another four circles, so you've got five circles all stacked up. And then to the right hand side of those circles, you need to draw two ovals, one pointing diagonally up and one pointing diagonally down. And then on the left hand side, another pair of ovals to mirror the first pair. And then, so finally, um, so out the top of the square, you need to draw a line, a, a curved line that comes out the top of the square and goes off to one side. 
um, probably about about five centimeters long, and draw a small circle at the end of it. And then out the top of the square, draw another curved line about the same length going the other direction and again with a small circle at the end of it. So who wants to, who wants to hold up what they've drawn or shout out what it is you've drawn? Fly. To fly. Fly? Butterfly. A butterfly? Butterfly. Some are better than well, my bar was certainly very low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was what I was trying to describe. <laughs> so yeah, lots I of butterflies look quite a lot on mine. No. I think that was pretty good as a starter, especially as we didn't know what we were drawing. Um, so Simon's instructions were quite simple, which was definitely helpful to me. Um, but we had to trust him and we had to listen. And he had to be quite kind. Um, so that we could actually follow the instructions that he was giving um, as well. But we've all achieved something that more or less looks like a butterfly. Shall we have a go at just one more? Are you ready? So in the middle of the paper, draw a rectangle. And it wants to be landscape, so that the top and bottom are longer than the two sides. And then to the right of that, you want to draw another slightly smaller rectangle, but taller than the first one. So the, se so the second rectangle is portrait and a little bit taller than your first rectangle. On top of the um, second rectangle, then draw a small, a small triangle. So the long edge of the triangle is the, is the same as the top of the rectangle. So you, you just have to draw two extra lines. At the bottom of the paper, across the bottom of the pa paper, underneath the two rectangles you've drawn, then you need to draw three circles that will just slightly overlap onto the, onto the rectangles. And then, sorry, I can see whatever's drawing. I'll try to laugh. Uh, and then, in the middle of each of those circles, love is kind. Yeah, that's why I'm not laughing. <laughs> in, in, in the middle of each of those circles, then draw two. In the middle of each of those circles, draw a draw a smaller circle. So you're drawing another three circles. So, and then return then to the first that first big rectangle that you drew. And on the left-hand side of that, draw a triangle towards the bottom of that left-hand side. And on, on top of that rectangle, draw, draw a small square. And on top of that small square, uh, another little triangle. What's everyone drawn then? Oh, look at them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Train. 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 There you go. There you go. Oh, no, I'll flip the window. <laughs> <laughs> the driver's just guessing where they're going. <laughs> well, you work, you work in the rail industry, Simon. So <laughs> yeah, they only look out the front. <laughs> so it's fine. So, um, well done. I think that was, that was really good. And I certainly wouldn't know where to start with drawing a train if I didn't have some instructions. So we just, we just show that we can do so much more if we show love and trust in it. It grows. If we give love away, um, it grows. And it's a little bit like the next song that we're going to sing. So um, I thought the best way to introduce that next song was to just show you a penny. It's called Love is Like a Magic Penny. And the line in it that I think is particularly close to our story today is love is like a magic penny. Lend it, spend it, give it away and you end up having more. So maybe you can remember that if you see an old penny, 
Love is like a magic penny. Lend it, spend it, give it away. You end up having more. Love is something if you give it away, give, give it, it away, away. give oh, yeah. it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. Love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. It's just like a man. So who likes broccoli? Oh, quite a lot of hands went up for broccoli. I should have said, who likes Brussels sprouts? Oh, surprising number of people like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> not, not the most popular vegetable in my experience, although they've grown on me as I've grown older. Um, well, anyway, I want to tell you a little story about a little girl who was invited for dinner at the home of her school friend and the vegetable was broccoli and the mother asked if uh, this little girl liked it oh yes the child replied politely i love broccoli but when the bowl of broccoli was passed she declined to have any the hostess said i thought you said you loved broccoli the girl replied sweetly oh yes i do but not enough to eat it. Another question. Do you love your family? That's good. <laughs> Simon. Um, we're, so, and most of you have said, of course you do. Of course you love your family. And we'd all say, most of us would say that. And, uh, but what do you mean by love? What do you mean by you love your family? Do you love your neighbours? So often we love like that little girl loved broccoli. We love from a distance. But when it comes down to it, we don't want to get too close. But Paul's message in the reading we had is simple advice showing how we can live 
and love. And first of all, he mentions being patient and kind. And Paul is saying to share and give with the right heart and with love. He wants you to give freely to others and not resent what you're giving or sharing. And love does not envy, does it? At least that's what our reading says. It does not uh, puff, puff itself up and parade around showing off. It does not envy. It's not jealous. But if you have things that other, what others want, you shouldn't make friends jealous because you have it and they don't. And that's a bit like boasting, which is another thing that the reading talks about. Love is not proud or big headed, but also it means it doesn't boast or brag. Basically, Paul is saying, accept what you have. What God has given you, be happy and not be I want this and that and this, this and the other. Love does not behave rudely. Love is not impolite or mean. Love does not do things that we'll regret and be ashamed of later. Love cares about others. Love doesn't look out for their own interests only or just themselves. That also includes grabbing things from people or interrupting when someone is talking. Love cares about other people's needs first. And love is not provoked. That means that love doesn't become easily angry, angry, angry easily. Love is forgiving. So always take time to pause and reflect before responding. And love rejoices in the truth, in the good things of life. It doesn't do wrong things, things that we know we shouldn't do. To be happy is to do what is right. And love bears all things. It trusts. It always hopes. It always puts up with things, even if they're not the things we really want to put up with. But it never gives up. It never fails. It never breaks. In other words, if you love someone or something, you never stop trying. You just keep on loving. Even sometimes when it hurts. So, when we think about love, most importantly, it's thinking about other people and how we care for other people. How we put other people first. How we look after other people. How we make sure that the things we do are not going to cause them hurt or pain. And love is patient. Love is willing to listen to others. And love is taking the time to give them your attention. I'm sure we can all think of times we've not done that. I can. In fact, I was told off today for not not doing that but that is the kind of love that god wants us to show others because that's the kind of love that god has for us so love is patient love is kind love is not jealous it does not brag it is not proud love is not rude it is not selfish it does not become angry easily Love does not remember wrongs done against it. Love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices over the truth. Love patiently accepts all things. It always trusts, always hopes, and always continues strong. And that's the kind of love that God has for each of us. But we struggle to be like God. And God doesn't intend us to be quite like him, not just yet anyway. In time, 
we can work at it and become more like him. But we can only do that because he's helping us. So that's the real love, the love that we see God, in, love that we see in God and that we can try to imitate. So that's uh, that's the real love, actually. So now I think Lucy is going to lead us in some prayers. Hello, everybody. Firstly, I want to ask everybody who is going to school at the minute. Are you going to school? You go a little bit, don't you? Who's not been to school for a long, long time? I've not been to school for a long, long time. Who will be going back to school soon in the next few weeks? Are we all excited about it? Are the mummies and daddies all excited about it? Who knows somebody who's going back to school in the next couple of weeks? Everybody. Everybody can think of somebody if it's a neighbour or a family member. Kyra. Kyra, Kyra will be going to school. So I need you to be quiet. Okay. So I want, while you're thinking about those people in your head who are going back to school soon, and you might be a little person who's going back to school soon, or you might have some friends who are going back to school with you, I want you to think about that line, love is patient and love is kind. Because it's quite frightening these next few weeks, isn't it? What was going to happen in these next few months as we come out of this horrible lockdown that we've been in and there is light at the end of the tunnel because we are getting our vaccinations and we're going to be able to mix again. So while we're doing our prayers today, I just want you to think about going back to school, all the people who are going back and love is patient, love is kind, all those little things that love is that Jeff's just talked about, keep them in your head while we're praying. Okay, so let us pray. Lord, we praise you that you are fully in control of all things. We pray that you will protect these children and keep them healthy and help them to thrive. Watch over them in all areas of their life and keep them safe. God, we thank you for the gift of knowledge. We praise that you have given us the ability to think and to question the world around us. As these children that we're thinking about and these children on this call join their schools again, help these children to learn well and to flourish. May they be kind and patient with their friends and their families and their teachers. And together, I pray they, help, they discover their own unique talents. Give them passion, Lord, for the new world around us. Amen. Amen. Good We're going to sing our final song in a moment. All you need is love. Because actually, that's all we do need. So, before, before we sing that, I just want to say we've got another bag coming in the not too many distant weeks. Uh, an Easter bag. So lots of exciting things to do for Easter. And we'll be meeting again at the on the final Sunday of March to uh, have a look what's in our Easter bags. And I mean, I'm, I'm excited because I think there might be a bit of chocolate in our Easter bags. But I don't know because I haven't seen the Easter bags yet. Um, so that'll be exciting. So tell all your friends if they want an Easter, but if they want some chocolate, they can they can come to Messy Church at the end of next month when we're online again because we will be but i don't think it's safe enough to gather uh, easily uh, together but we will do one day and we look forward to that and we're going to have a big messy church um and uh, i'm not going to be bothered about the church being messy so uh, i hope you won't be either so 
Let's sing. All you need is love. So, may God fill us with his love so that it may overflow and drench those around us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you, remain with you and all those whom you love now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.